everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thanks for watching my tutorial today. Um, I've got a bit of a funny one because I was, um, earlier today I went and had lunch at the local pub and we sat down chatting away and then I look at the bar and they've got this like little um, blackboard saying um, Porsecco, three pound a bottle. And I thought, what the hell is that? And it is, I will, well, I'll show you this one. It is a still wine for cats and dogs. And this is the Pet House Rosé. Um, it's alcohol free, no grapes. Um, it's perfect for those on four feet. It says you can serve it over food um, or just as, you know, um, the liquid. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't got any dogs or cats. I've got lots of people that have. I've got lots of people who will think this is just a waste of money and I've got lots of people who will absolutely love it. Now, I can see the fun side in it. I think it, if it's their birthday, Christmas Day, um, you know, things like that, then why not? Um, three pounds? Oh, that's a bit steep. But um, we shall see. See if this takes off or not. It's um, it's only been out two weeks, I believe. I looked them up online. Um, but I thought... Oh my god, I've just recently done that treat box for pets, which was really, really popular. So I thought I'm going to do a light wine bottle for pets. But this will also fit the small bottles of Prosecco, you know, normal adult Prosecco, mini bottles of wine and things like that. So this is to be used for all of that because I know that obviously this isn't this video won't apply to everybody because if you don't have pets um, you may not do it but then if you've got friends so you will use it for that but I think this is just completely comical and so much fun so this is the one that I've done so I'm just going to take that so this is the the pet house white and that's the pet house rosé um, like I said look them up online um, it's got all the ingredients and stuff on there and um, it's elderflower nettle ginseng lime flower water um, all okay stuff. I mean, it's obviously been tested and whatnot. So anyway, there you go. And it's a 250 mil. But I've made this lovely box to hold it in. And you can see inside there, it's got the die cut circle to sit it in. And then I've just done a little label with the woof woof stamp that I used in the treat box, which I will um, put the link on to after this video. The stamps, um, basically this is, so the Woof Woof stamp is from the, um, which magazine was it? Oh, did I not bring it? I don't think I brought it in. can't remember the name of the magazine for this one. I'll put the link up in a minute on here so you will, you will know. But uh, this one's brilliant, all kinds of things. I could have put the bone on as well, but I just used the Woof for the label. And then the little paw print is from this lovely stamp set, which is brand new, which is from the newest Papercraft Essentials um, magazine and um, it's just really really lovely it reminds me of Lawn Fawn they do a lot of if I put it like that you can see it Lawn Fawn do a lot of this style the little animals and stuff like that but it's just got that tiny little paw print and I basically just went crazy and put it all over the paper here stuck with black and white because of the the bottles I thought they've got kind of like black and white um, and it's black on the thing on the top there and stuff so I just thought it matched quite well but it fits in this is all reinforced so it's super strong I mean I'm holding it like that but you can see there none of it's kind of bending or anything so it's it is all nice and safe so yeah check it out <laughs> I will share the link to their website and stuff and let me know your thoughts so um, I'm intrigued to see how this is going to work but nonetheless this is a lovely box for mini bottles of wine um, not just pet Prosecco, Prosecco so let's crack on you are going to need so this is from one I've already started doing bits just to make it easier for the video but this is from one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock so sorry I just left my measurements over the other side so you're going to need four pieces of three by 12, okay? So that's just straightforward. So literally your 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and just cut at three, six, nine, and then you've got your four pieces. Go through all the scoring in a minute. And then you will need two pieces of whatever printed DSP um, printed paper that you want to use for your decoration. And this will measure at two and three fours by seven and three fours. 
and then you need two other little pieces um, of whatever design you want to do and these measure at two and three fours by one and three fours of an inch okay so that's all those pieces and then you need a label so I've just die cut my stitched circle nest and I've just used two of the, the sizes there to just stamp and put the paw prints and then I've just put another plain one on the back as well just to write your little message and then a piece of ribbon of choice. Um, you will also need something, I have got this little die, rectangle die, to do the little handle at the top here. So, I mean, that is that is kind of optional because you can hold it like that if you're going to gift it to someone or if you're going to have them on the tables, then you, you don't necessarily need that. And you could maybe um, use a paper clip to, you know, put the tag on and stuff. So it's entirely up to you. Um, but uh, those are the bits that I've used. So shovel that to one side. So grab your four pieces of three by 12 cardstock and... We are going to, so you're going to grab two pieces and along the 12 inch side, you are going to score at three inches. So just at three on one of them and then again at three on the other one. So that's those two. And then put those to one side. Then grab your other two pieces and again along the 12 inch side, you're going to score at two and a half, four and a half, seven and a half and nine and a half. So again, on the other one, you're going to score at two and a half, four and a half, seven and a half, and nine and a half. Okay, so you'll have two pieces the same, and then another two pieces the same. Okie dokie. So next, what you want to do is, that's all the scoring done. You don't be needing it anymore, so you can get rid of that. Now, you want to do a circle in the middle of each of the... So use these two pieces first, the ones that you just scored um, all those score lines in. And what I found the easiest way to do this was my die that I've got is from my Sizzix nest of just normal dies. And this one measures at two and a half inches. So that's what you need. Um, obviously, big is OK. You don't want to go too big because the bottle will move around, but you don't want to go any smaller. Not for that size bottle, because you can see there it fits it nicely. So two and a half size, whatever one you've got as close as that is what you need. Now what I found easiest to do is pop it in the middle of any of these. Um, I won't show you those ones because that's going to confuse you. So pop it in the middle and just draw um, a circle around it. Oh no, actually the first one, put it on and put it through your um, machine. So let's just do that first and then you can see what I'm talking about. I'm just going to grab a bit of sticky tape. So pop it on your plate and just line it up where you want it to go on this first one. So you don't need to worry about drawing a pencil mark for this piece, but it needs to be as dead centre in that square as possible. And just pop a bit of tape there just to hold it in place. Grab my plate and run that one through. Okay. So now that you've done that one, what you then want to do is grab your other piece, lie that, and um, no, forget that, I'm doing it wrong. Then get the piece that you've done, lie it so it's exactly in line with all the score lines, because this is going to be reinforced on top of this piece. And then you will draw a pencil mark around that circle you've drawn. So then it will reveal this one. Then you can grab your die, line it up and run it through your machine and that means that you are getting it spot on to match up with each. Because basically these are all going to be stuck on top of each other. So I'm just going to line that up with that pencil one that I've just drawn. Like so. Like so. Again, run that through. So, because those two are going to go on top of each other, then grab the other two that you've got. I already done these ones. And again, using one of these ones, you will just lie that square over that square, that three inch score line that you've done. 
So that's the three by three square, the same as this. Lie it over the top. Now I've already cut this one, so I should do it on that one to show you better. So lie it over the top and again, draw around it in pencil so I can see mine already lines up. Take it off, line up your die again. Like so. Again, run it through. Like so. And then you would then, again, you would do that on top of that other one that you had, draw the circle and cut it out, but I've obviously already done that. So now when I put mine together, I know that my circles are going to line up with each one. So it gives it a really nice finish. Because you can't put through, you can maybe put two through your die cut at the same time, but I don't think they would print right through. And even if you put more card on top, you probably end up ruining your machine. So this is the easiest way I've found to get it right and precise. Um, so once you've done all of that, what we need to do with the two pieces where you have your circle at the bottom, this top here is going to be where you're going to have the handles. So like I said earlier, this this can, I guess, now be optional. You don't have to put the handles in. I'm just corner punching those off just to keep them nice and tidy. And then where did I put that little die? Um, oh my gosh, where did that just go? I literally just had it. You saw me, I showed it to you all. Ah, oh, oh no. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. So it's exactly the same process again. So I'm going to lie this one. Okay, so I'm going to lie it in place here. I'm going to bring it down a little bit than I did before. Like so. Just grab a bit of this. Recycle this tape. There we go. And I'm just going to run the top of this through my machine again. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. And then I'm going to draw around it on that second piece. And it just means then your handles are completely lined up. I love that sound. <laughs> that made me really weird. Um, okay, right. So there's that one. And then just lie that on top. Making sure it's all nice and even. And again, just draw around that. And then again, I can just line that now so it sits perfectly like so. Right, so that is all of the fiddly bits done. So that is what you should have. Okay. So at this stage now, go and burnish all of your sides. So just fold them all over. Grab a bone tool there and just literally. So these, these ones here you want to fold under because this is going to be forming the box. I've already put tape on the bottom of mine. Um, it was just to make it a bit quicker. Like so, that's that one, and then this one. You don't need tape under, but that's why I haven't explained the tape yet, so don't go rushing off doing that, because you don't need it on everything, you only need it on certain bits. So again, just burnishing all of that one, and then just that end one there, and I think I'd already done that one there. Okay, so now we can decorate, because it's always good to decorate it when it's flat. So what you want to do is grab your, either anything really, but I'm just going to do these two first. I've already put double-sided tape on the back of mine there. So I'm just going to grab my pokey tool, leave that to one side. Just take off. One of that. Okay. So starting from the top, I'm just going to line that up so I get a nice even border. Like so. Oh, it's got a bit wonky. Oh, I think I can get away with it. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Right, and then this one. I don't know why that's gone wonky. I thought I had it all lined up. Hey ho. Right. I'll get this one right. 
Right, let me lean over a bit. Okay. Oh. Okay. That looks straight. She says. Hmm. I'm a little bit off with my cutting. I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. It'll do. Right. So now let me get this right. Now go back to these ones, and before we put these other pieces on doesn't matter for you guys but I've got it in the right place here so this one of them basically you're going to be putting one on top of the other this is just to reinforce it just so it's really really super strong so you just want to stick adhesive onto the back of one of them and then around where the circle is if you add some um, tacky glue just in these I'm going to put it over the top of this as well because this is this is okay, this double-sided tape, but I just want it to be extra, extra uh, strong. I'm just going to put a little bit of tacky glue in this bit here, like so. And around those edges, like so. And then, oh god, watch me try to do this one now. This is when I'm going to get it stuck everywhere. Probably should have done it bit by bit. Right, okay. Oh God, I don't feel comfortable doing this. Um, okay, <laughs> wish me luck. I'm gonna hold it up, I think. You basically just wanna stick it down. There we go, if I do it that way, then I'm not gonna catch it. Literally as neatly as possible. Working your way down like I am, keeping the sides in. Oh, so far so good. Can peel it a little bit then that's okay like so okay so that is the base and then you are going to fold this piece either piece over to make your base so that is oh, let's stop that bit down there it's a little bit off that is basically what you want to have is that shape there Okay, so I'm just going to stick that one down. So if you just line that bottom one up and then it will just go over nicely. So you basically now have four pieces on the bottom. This is what makes it so strong. And then in a minute, this is going to reinforce the top. So now, oh, actually, we should have just, it's fine, you can stick these bits on, it won't hurt. Just pop these two side panels on. So again, just get a nice even border. Like so. trying to catch a bit at the end of the day I'm starting to get a shadow I've got my little lamp on as well but it's always nice when you've got the natural daylight there we go okay so that's what you want is that effect there so now what we need to do is we're going to stick yeah that was it like so so I'm going to have to put one underneath like so we'll go in and you're going to stick that underneath and it's going to come up like so. So you want to apply some glue, tacky glue on here. Like so. Pull it across and then line up that score line because then you know that you've got it where it needs to be and again it should all line up like so and then again this one I'd already put some adhesive on before so I'm just going to remove all of this but I'm going to put tacky glue on top of this as well
And then just pop that one. Again, line that score line up. If you hold it upright, then you know that you're getting it exact. And just line it all up. Just turn it over again. So you've got four bits of card on the top and you've got four bits of card on the bottom. So it is super, super strong and it will hold that wine. So you'll probably just want to let yours kind of set a little bit, but already there you have your box. So it's, it is really, really straightforward. Um, so now I'm just going to apply my little sentiment and my ribbon, uh, like so. Pop this bit through. Hold on, oh sorry, I just knocked my camera. I'm trying to tie this. But so it's in the camera as well. Here we go. Oh, I've cut way too much ribbon. I always do this. Right, let's just trim. That's alright, this will go for my card making side. And there you go. How lovely is that? Give it a little play around. There we go. So I'm going to pop my rosé in that one and my white wine in that one. And there you have it. I'm obviously trying to show you at the same time. But it holds that really nicely. And like I said, if you're just having them as, um, well, you'd have them as favours at a dinner table if it was the adult wine um, mini bottles. But um for your dog, I guess you'll just play along with it. I don't know. Um, but it's fun. And um, there you go. So these are mini wine Prosecco um, bottles. But today they are using the Porsecco. So please let me know what your views are on this. I'd love to hear it. I think it's just a nice bit of fun. Um, anyway, as always, I hope you've enjoyed the, um, the video today. Um, please uh, hit like if you do and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.